We'll quickly make a stopover now in uh, Kaduna State where Comrade uh, Bako, yeah, former president of uh, Campaign for Democracy, is uh, joining us live to share some few thoughts on recent development in Kano, where former Kano State Governor, I mean, former, former Kano State, uh, the Emir of Kano, uh, recently was reinstated by the Governor of Kano State. Recall that during the tenure of uh, Abdullahi Ganduji as a governor, Sanusi was dethroned and, of course, was banished from Kano. And uh, at, the, at that moment, about five Emirate councils were created in the state with five new emirs. And for Kano specifically, uh, um, the Zura Highness Bayero now came on board as the emir of Kano. But today, Sanusi is back in Kano State. So let's uh, get to hear what is the mood like in Kano? What's, what's the... What's the implication of this latest development? Comrade Bako is uh, joining us live. Hello, Comrade. No, it's a pleasure being with you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good to see you. Pleasure. Morning. All right, quickly share your thoughts with us on uh, what is the mood like in Kano State over the recent development? Uh, this is jubilation, and uh, there are those that are uh, saddened with the sudden uh, change of uh, mantle of uh, uh, the traditional title in Kano. Because uh, apparently, when you see most that are not happy with the mood are people who are alleged to be uh, supporters of uh, those other. Uh, Emirate Council like the Diane, uh, Reno, uh, uh, Karai, and uh, 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 the other one is uh, Diane. So I think uh, most people are not happy because uh, they are people who they are full supporters of such uh, uh, emirs. But when you look holistically, in the middle, the main city of Kano State, uh, people are still celebrating the return of Jerusalem uh, uh, as the distinct emir of the state. But that happening, yes, still, uh, members of the public, some are inclined with uh, Aminu Ado Barairo, and as we speak now, uh, if not uh, the governor himself and uh, the emir, have not gained uh, uh, entrance into the main chamber. They have not gained access into the main chamber of the Emirate Council. So things are still uh, uh, in the pipeline and the tension is very high because uh, you can see the deployment of our uh, security agencies are there. A lot of vigilante are on ground to see that uh, it goes peacefully. So for me, I think uh, it is with a mixed feeling the very, very robust perspective there that you give it to us. Um, one of the things you said is that the tension is high in Kano as a result of this reinstatement. Uh, from your experiences and your knowledge about the politics and politics of uh, Kano State, uh, would you like to talk to us about the implication of what has happened, this reinstatement of Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi, uh, as the new emir of Kano? And then these frequent changes that we have seen, what does this also portend for the traditional institution? Uh, for me, I no longer hold that uh, utmost uh, concern as a native uh, uh, custom of the people. Because when you see, for me, I think that uh, the traditional rulers who are the custodians of uh, our native uh, people, do not be seen as a political appointee. And uh, our cultural heritage has been lost completely if we allow uh, politicians to be the one appointing uh, uh, people into a uh, traditional title. Going back to your question, I think economically, uh, Kanu is, uh, must have lost a lot of revenue seeing that uh, that's part today is Saturday. That Kano being an industrialized uh, 
see you you agree with me that uh, even the igrs that are supposed to come in into Kano at the moment are being hot and uh socially the, the the interactions that are supposed to be going on socially in Kano are equally uh at the hot so politically yes you will see that uh, they are more divided functions in the state regarding the fear or regarding what has happened there are so many factors that are behind it be it economic social and politically that uh, Kano will be paying immensely for it doing memory lane it has happened before and uh, inaugurations come on board with finances from both the state and uh, the emirate council financing such and we know the quantum of uh, how homogeneous uh, budgets were made for such to happen. So it is not left, that is not left out for now too, because a lot of activities, a lot of ceremony will go into that, taking, uh, reducing value for actually uh, dividends of democracy for the people. Because when you say you want to have a elaborate uh, ceremony for the installment of a new uh, emir in Kano. It takes a lot of money and uh, the finances are there. So I think for me, it is it has no value for the money that uh, will be spent. But we are craving, we are praying that uh, maybe socially it will bring more uh, cohesion for the state to enjoy. But for now, the atmosphere is very uh, in Kano is very tense, and uh, we shouldn't uh, be allowed to leave these uh, institutions of uh, 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 the Emirate culture into the hands of politicians because uh, it, it, it will always fail due. We saw that in the uh, Chagari led administration, then when Abubakar uh, Rimi was the governor of the state, he uh, created two additional uh, Emirate Council, then Karai and uh, 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 Renault. Then when uh, Savo Bakinzo came in, he uh, equally abolished same as uh, uh, Abba Yusuf uh, uh, Gida, Gida has done in this present administration. And uh, we knew the quantum of loss then when uh, really created uh, this Emirate and the uh, same is applying to this uh, administration. So I think uh, basically the loss are more higher than uh, the gain uh, for now. But uh, it depends on what Sunusi Lami do Sunusi will be bringing on board to improve the welfare and the well-being, political uh, and economic value of his uh, throne in the state going forward. Right. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Comrade Bako. Very uh, useful and insightful thoughts that uh, you just shared with us about the situation building up in uh, Kano as a result of the reinstatement of uh, Sanusi Lamido, Sanusi II, as the new Emir of Kano. Uh, just, we'll keep tabs with you. Just hold it there. Let me quickly bring uh, Professor Nuruddin Asunogi, an Islamic scholar and lawyer, on board the conversation. Uh, well, I know you would have been here much earlier, but it's crazy getting to the studio here because of the situation on the Benin Lagos Expressway due to protest. But this is, uh, was this something that you ever anticipated was going to happen? What? The what protest? Has, the, not the protest, the, okay. the, kind of, the kind of situation. Well, let me begin by saying that uh, when Lamido was removed, we did say that it was a most dolorous psychological phenomenon that was most likely to unfortunately perpetuate itself. And if you looked at the way Lamido had carried himself all this while, he was under a monumental illusion that he still was the Emir of Kano. What that, of course, implied was that he would do everything humanly possible to return. And that basically was what he did. 
Do not forget that uh, his removal was predicated on a number of issues, which included his deep involvement in politics. Uh, the institution, the traditional institution, is one institution that needed to be respected, an institution that was supposed to be sacred, an institution that whoever occupies it needed to work against atomizing, individualizing, and enduring the ambience or the culture of competition amongst the subject. All you needed to do was to bring about collaboration. He was deeply involved. These were no mere insinuation. He had worked in 2019 for the present governor. And so once he was declared the winner, again, he was involved. He had said that in public uh, fora, mm. that he was involved. He got the late access bank man to sponsor this election. And so that was an investment, obviously, from, for which he expected. So this a, is a, part a, of his returns. A return. Mm. It was part of what the fellow had campaigned on. But mm. like I said, what was unfortunate is that why they do all of this, it is the institution that is denigrated, is the institution that is humiliated. And so you can begin to appreciate that there is a gulf between what he says. A deeply cerebral man, uh, highly cerebral, one who loves act of celebration. But I do think that there is a dichotomy between the things he says and what he does. When it comes to the area of fructifying deed, he's pathologically anemic. He had given the impression before now that he was gone. He is moved past that that he, he was a much better person than those who had removed him. But if he still was pisillated with the idea of returning to what he had left, is analogous to one coming back to feast on its own regurgitation. Yeah. Only one who is moronic, one who has a psychiatric problem, would celebrate. If he begins to celebrate his return to that position today, you want to ask the question, what is the basis of celebration? You've been there before. Okay. So what is new? What progress did you make by returning? Okay. I absolutely do not see anyone. Uh, and again, when, now that he has come, yeah. the Emirates that was bacchanized by, 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 by the Afghan Ga government, yeah. Ga Ganduji, is being brought back under one. And people will say, oh, fine, that brings about unity. But you're asking unity at what expense? Mm. I'll tell you most frankly, development was much more rapid, was most assured under a balkanized emirate than when you had it under just one man. Is this Where, something that should be un encouraged within a traditional institution? What should be encouraged? Balkanization. No, well, you see, we, the truth of the matter is that you ask the question, what do we seek power for? Hmm. If power is sought for the purpose of control and dominance, it loses its import particularly that which is divine. Power should be sought only to create a bad connectedness, okay. only to create abundance. And so once you exercise it in a way that does not promote abundance, then it obviously has no meaning. Okay, let me, let me push it there, Professor uh, Asunoge. Uh, let me quickly link up with uh, Comrade Bako, who is joining us from uh, Kaduna State. I heard that there is uh, a court order restraining the removal of the former emirs and the reinstatement of uh, Sanusi Lamide Sanusi. And then the governor, uh, Abba Yusuf, while swearing him in or giving him the certificate of his return, uh, said while that ceremony was going on, the man who, gave, who granted the order restraining them from carrying out what they needed to do was in America. I don't know if you, ha if you are privy to this information and what that portends for this uh, reinstatement of uh, Sanusi Lamide Sanusi. Comrade. Our leaders our duty bearers have a way of uh, flopping. The flopping in the sense that uh, they say one statement today and they say the other uh, the next day. Uh, for who for the young man that uh, was alleged to take this issue before the court, he's rightly in Nigeria, he's now anywhere outside the shores of uh, this country. And uh, he has done that based on his uh, fundamental right as uh, one who is part of uh, those within the Emirate Council. 
And if you look inwardly, you realize that. Why uh, the, the governor was presenting the letter of uh, engagement to uh, in, uh, the Emirates uh, uh, for re throne he made it categorically in his statement, and I quote that, uh, by the powers confided on him by the Kano Emirate Council Law of 1984 and 2024, getting access to the main number a problem. So that tells you that the kingmakers added there is questionable. So sometimes have a way of not telling us the right regarding their narrative. I, I, I still have reservation on saying that uh, 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 the man who instituted uh, the, 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 the court case is not uh, within the shores of this country. Because Justice Lehman has clearly said that, yes, let's maintain status quo on this issue, but our institutions are not, re uh, uh, not respected. Rather, our, uh, our individuals are more stronger than our institutions, and that is what is playing for now regarding the court uh, uh, orders that were laid out previously. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure of being with you always. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Bako Abdul. Thank you for the views. Let me, let me come back to Prof. as we call it a wrap now. Uh, there is a, a court order restraining the execution of this uh, reinstatement. Uh, has that paled into insignificance? as a result of what has happened. Well, like he, the comrade did say, it is unfortunate that we have this culture of impunity, which unfortunately we have allowed to fructify. Uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi is a beneficiary of court order. When he was banished to local in Nasarawa state, he benefited from a court order. The Kano state government then of Ganduji would have ignored the court order and keep him in communicado. When uh, Yusuf, Abba Yusuf was threatened, you know, the tribunal had declared his election void ab initio. Fortunately, the APS courts granted him a victory, which explains why he's in power. If those orders had been violated, if they were honored in breaches, they would not be where they are. It is not for the governor to say the, 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 the court, the judge, the, the judge is not in town, mm. is out of this country, which will mean that he is, he is aware of that or that he can no longer feign ignorance. What he had just done is to act in impunity. But I think that because he has immunity, we may not have the opportunity of getting him to answer for that. But Lamido enjoys no immunity. So they should commence a process of whatever. I am not bothered about whether Lamido returns or he does not return. That's not my problem. Okay. But I do have issues with when you are coming under an institution that ought to run on the fuel of legality and you want to come in by being illegal. So that yeah. creates a fundamental problem. But if he survives, we only hope that he's returning to be like his great-grandfather, who was Emir Abdullahi Bayaru not like his grandfather who had been deposed. And the basis for the depo uh, for the dethronement, of course, was that he had speculated resources that was owned. That was part of what Ganduji had accused him of. So okay. let's hope that he will be as humble as his great-grandfather now that he has returned. Because his uh, hubris is obfuscating. Okay. We hope that he had learned something, but I don't think he learned nothing. Oh, only time will tell. Thank you very much, sir, Professor Nuruddin Asunogi. Uh, many thanks to Comrade Bako Abdul, who joined us uh, from Kaduna State to ventilate his views on this issue. <laughs>